Hello, welcome to the Heart and Hand podcast post-match analysis of the St Johnston game. My name's David Edgar. Uh, I'm the host of Heart and Hand, for those who don't know, or maybe seeing me for the first time. And I'm sorry for the delay in getting this one up tonight. Uh, I was actually out. I was out at a, a gig, and those of you who know me will know very few things get me out of the house as it is, but uh, Half Man, Half Biscuit certainly would, and uh, certainly did, and they were very good as well. But uh, obviously that meant missing the game. But I'd bought my tickets for this show before and made plans before the Friday night switch. So I've just watched it now after getting home. And uh, it's a bit different watching a game when you know when you know what the result is. So it does take away that tension. But in another way it's good because it lets you be quite analytical. And in terms of the, the, the stuff that I got from watching it is, first of all, the commentary. Um, Terry Butcher and Chris Sutton. When Chris Sutton is more popular with Rangers fans than Terry Butcher, then I think BT really need to look at their choice of who they're hiring. I don't actually want to go too much detail on Terry Butcher because listening to it, I genuinely do wonder if he is in the early stages of losing his faculties. So in case I'm going to be slagging off someone who has a legitimate you know, medical condition because uh, otherwise... The shite that comes out of that man's mouth, I mean, good God, it's it's unbelievable. And someone should just take him aside and say, you know, Terry, fuck up, because you're making a complete tool of yourself every week. I mean, the guy is about as funny as a dog bite, and probably, unfortunately, he's more insidious. It's constant with him. So the commentary apart, I thought Graham Dorans had his best game for us tonight. I thought Graham Dorans was absolutely terrific this evening. Fantastic performance from him, topped off by a goal, but also, you know, the, the shot at the bar. But I just thought his discipline and his control of the midfield was absolutely fantastic. And I think we're beginning to see him settling now into a regular, a regular run of form, and he now knows what his role is in the team. I was excited for Graham Dorans because I think he's a cracking player. I thought he was a cracking player and I think he will develop and maybe again we've done that thing we do where we don't let people have time to settle because we, we make our minds up fairly quickly as Rangers supporters. Um, but I think I think uh, Dawes is going to be a, a great player. Dawes, you think I know him? You know, ah, my mate Dawes, I don't. You know, He's welcome to come round any time, you know, watch, watch a game but then he'll be playing in it. So I don't see how that would work. Maybe if he wants to see Liverpool Man United tomorrow, I don't know. Um, good from Tav, a guy who's taken a lot of criticism and a lot of it fair, but especially going forward, you saw what he can bring to the team and the, the first ball was just perfect, but the second one I thought was even better. Just an absolutely belter. And of course, from that, we've got to go into Carlos Peña, two-goal hero of the match. What an odd player Carlos Peña is. Um, sometimes he looks as though he's never been introduced to football, but as we've been saying on the pod for a few weeks now, he's dangerous. And you're just going to have to expect that sometimes he's going to have you with y your head in your hands and other times he's going to have you out your seat cheering. The two finishes were absolutely outstanding. They weren't easy. The movement for both was fantastic to lose his man in the six-yard box. And then the, the way he put them away was that of a seasoned striker. And with him and Dorans, that's five goals for Dorans, four goals for um, four goals for Pena already. We're getting goals from midfield, we're getting goal scorers. Something that did not happen under Warburton where, where the midfield was, was utterly lacking. Candias, I think, can weigh in. And I, I still do think Windass could weigh in. It was a very Windassian performance this evening where some of it was very good and some of it well, he just wasn't there, you can't even say it was bad, he just completely disappeared from the match, which we've seen quite a lot. Morelos um, obviously didn't score tonight, but one thing you can ask a striker is, if you're not scoring goals, contribute, and he really does. He works really, really hard, he's a menace, he's constantly in and around the defenders, you'd hate to play against them. I had to laugh a little bit when I heard Tommy Wright suggest that it wasn't a it wasn't a sending off because obviously none of us know what went on at the, the corner kick that led to the two bookings but the, the referee was fairly even handed in it you have to say and then if a guy's breaking off and you've got cover which he did Anderson has no need to pull him back as soon as you pull him back it's a cynical professional fill and referees will tend to book you and that's exactly what happened I honestly don't see what his, his complaint was speaking of Alves I thought him and Cardoso tonight were terrific and uh, credit also to Tavernier and uh, Elton John because people will quote the 16 corners and it makes it sound like St Johnston had the best of the game, which they didn't. 
But the reason they got so many corners was that we were preventing crosses coming in, something that we we just didn't do previously, and a lot of clearances to stop the ball going into dangerous areas. And that's okay because we had players tonight who could cope with set-piece delivery and did so admirably the whole game. And I, I thought that was Cardoso's best best uh, performance in a Rangers shirt tonight and hopefully the, the beginning of him starting to develop into the player that we know he is. And Big Bruno, captain tonight, excellent performance, thought was a real leader, looked like a real leader. And it was interesting to see young McCrory come on and them go to a three towards the end. And OK, it was only six or seven minutes, but it's just... It's good if we can be flexible. That That's what we really need to be able to do. We've got to have that bit of flexibility. And I think tonight that, that we showed that we did have that. I am really can't believe, in fact, I, I just I, I can't get over. I, I am really, really impressed with us conceding 16 corners and not conceding from them because, you know, having come off the, the war button rain, if we conceded 16 corners, it'd be 12 goals. That's just the fact, because uh, at no point did it look as though we knew how to defend. So it's really encouraging to, that, that Pedro has been working on something, but you can see the fruits of it coming through, and obviously you can see the same situation with Cardoso's improvement. So I, I think that kind of thing is very important to us, to show that the manager having time with the players can lead to an improvement. And that's another away win. That is a point, I think, that needs addressed. Look at Pedro's away record, it's really, really good. And his home record is is very, very poor. And I think that balances out to this sort of, we're not quite sure, position that we're in at the moment. And I do wonder if we need to look at ourselves a little bit as supporters and say, are we doing enough at home to help the team? Because the away support is always terrific. The players speak about it, you could hear it tonight. They always just get behind the team 100%. And I do wonder if maybe we could do more of that at Ibrox and we could provide a bit more of the support rather than the, the, the kind of very negative sitting there waiting for something bad to happen and when it does we get on the team's back and I, I must admit I was cynical I've always been cynical about oh, the, the 12th man and all that kind of thing I just thought you're a professional footballer go out and play it but when you speak to explorers they say no no it, it, it does make a difference so I think there might be something in that because when you look at our away results, they're very, very good. Usually, you know, scoring goals and playing well. And I think it's because in a match like tonight, where it took us about 15 minutes to settle in, and then at the start of the second half, when St Johnson had that period of pressure, the away fans don't panic the way the home fans do and don't get on the team's back straight away. So you don't have the loss of confidence issue that you get, I think, quite regularly at home. So maybe something for us to consider. Uh, you know that we don't have a fantastic team. I think we have the makings of a good team, but at the moment, any little advantage, anything we can we can do to help them, you know, we should. And I, I really believe that if we do that and we can get the home form sorted, because oh, how many football teams in the world will they go? Oh, our away form is great, but our home form's a problem. You know that that doesn't happen that regularly, it does happen occasionally so I think it's something for us to, to maybe think about going forward but a 3-0 away win at a tough place, a team that's finished in the top uh, the top four for the last three seasons they'll take points off, off other sides, they, they really will but we're starting to just show we're a good team, we need to and I know it's difficult and it's easy for me to say this after a 3-0 win, I know that we need to show a little bit of patience, we need to show a little bit of patience for the manager and that side is coming together. You know, Candace is fitted in now. We're beginning to see what Peña was bought to do. Dorans is selling in. Alves, Cardoso. I think in Declan John, we've got a really good player there. And uh, there's a chance to make it permanent. He's out of contract at the end of the year. So overall, I'm very pleased. It's very positive. And I also got to, you know, sing along to fucking hell. It's Fred Titmus. So all in all, a pretty great evening. Thank you very, very much for listening. We'll have a fuller dissection of the of the match on Monday's pod. Look forward to talking to you then. And in the meantime, if you want to get in touch with us, it's at Ibrox Rocks on Twitter, or just go to Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast on Facebook. Search for that and you'll see us there. Talk to you soon. Bye.